Hello everyone and welcome to the Craftcore YouTube channel. This video is about this special sewing machine attachment called a ruffler. This attachment will allow you to create a variety of ruffles. Depending on where you insert your fabric, or fabrics, and how you adjust the settings, you can make a variety of ruffling effects. I made a dress recently, which used the ruffler foot to attach the grey ruffle trim on the bottom of the dress, plus gather the skirt where it attaches to the bodice. It makes creating ruffles and gathers quick and hassle-free. Today I'll be demonstrating how to attach and use this accessory on the Singer Featherweight sewing machine, but the same principles will apply as long as you're attaching the ruffler to a compatible sewing machine. This particular version is a low shank ruffler attachment. Let's look at the parts of this attachment. This is the foot connector that will clamp onto the presser bar. This is the fork arm that will hook over the needle clamp screw. This is the adjusting screw that regulates the fullness of the gather. This is the adjusting lever that sets the level of ruffling. There are four settings. Zero will disable the ruffling entirely. The most dense option, one, will create a gather with every stitch of the machine. Six will create a pleat every six stitches, and twelve will create a pleat every twelve stitches. So 1 is the most full and will use the most amount of fabric, and 12 is the least full and will use the least amount of fabric. This is the ruffling blade. The teeth at the end push the fabric material in pleats up towards the needle. Below that is the separator blade, which is a blue steel and prevents the ruffling blade from coming into contact with the feet of the machine and also prevents any fabric fed below the ruffler from being ruffled too. If this sounds confusing, the demonstration will make this all clear. First, let's attach the ruffler to the machine. Raise the presser bar and the needle bar to its highest point. Unscrew the thumb screw from the foot that's currently on your machine to remove it. Then slide the ruffler foot onto the presser bar while simultaneously hooking the fork arm of the ruffler onto the needle clamp. Once it's in place, screw the thumb screw back into place. When you first attach the foot, don't rush to use your foot pedal. First turn the hand wheel slowly to make sure that the needle will not strike the attachment. Also, check to make sure that when the needle bar goes up and down that the fork arm of the ruffler is also going up and down and engaging the entire foot like this. How to make a basic ruffle trim. Let's ruffle some fabric. Be sure to grab some scrap fabric so that you can test out your settings and make any necessary adjustments before switching to your project fabric. Before you start sewing, you'll need to decide how close together you want your ruffles. Place either every 1, 6, or 12 stitches. Lift the adjusting lever to match the corresponding hole with the adjustment finger. Keep in mind that the distance between pleats will also be influenced by your stitch length set on the machine itself. Next, decide how full of a gather you'd like. Turn the screw tighter or looser depending on your preference. Usually I don't adjust this at all, I generally keep mine at the midway point. Here are some examples with the screw fully tightened, at the midway point, or at the loosest setting. I've done all these examples with the pleat at every 12 stitches. You can see there's not too much difference between the midway point and the fully tightened, so I just leave it at the midway point to keep things easy. For a fabric ruffle trim, I generally take a strip of fabric and fold it in half right sides out. This is so that the bottom of the fabric will be finished like this. Place the fabric strip raw edges towards the right over the separating blade but under the ruffling blade teeth. Lower the presser foot, then use your foot pedal to start sewing. This is a setting of 12 for a loose ruffle. Here, I've switched to a stitch setting of 6.
And here, I've switched to a stitch setting of one to make a very dense gather. If you're in a scenario where you need to pause gathering, you can move the adjusting lever to zero, which disables the ruffling functionality without you having to remove the foot. You can easily switch between the ruffle options as well. That was a basic ruffle, but did you know that you can sew a ruffle directly to a piece of fabric all in one motion? Load a piece of fabric below the separating blade under the needle, then load the fabric to be ruffled between the ruffling blade and the separating blade, just as I did in our basic ruffle example. Start sewing, and the ruffle will be assembled and sewn in a seam with the flat fabric all in one motion. Depending on how you're using your ruffle in your project, you may need to load your fabric right side up or right side down. To estimate the length of fabric you would need to attach to a certain project, I recommend cutting a 10 inch scrap of fabric, putting it through your ruffler with the desired fullness settings. Measure how long your scrap fabric became. So let's say that you're attaching ruffles to a 36 inch piece of fabric. Let's also say that the 10 inch test piece of fabric became a four and a half inch piece of fabric after ruffling. 36 inches divided by 4.5 multiplied by 10 equals approximately 80 inch length of fabric. There may be some variance, so it's best to cut a little bit extra. I love ruffles, so I really love the ruffle attachment. There are some other functions available as well, such as sewing piping directly with this foot onto the ruffle, but I haven't had a purpose to try this out yet. If you enjoyed this video, please click or tap that thumbs up button. It would really help me out. You can also subscribe for more sewing and crafting videos. Thanks for watching. This is Craftcore signing off. See you next time. I love ruffles. They are so cute.